Hey everyone, welcome back. Thank you for tuning in today. Uh, today we are going to be talking about another aspect of the Glowforge, but we are going to be talking about the Glowforge software. So there have been a lot of questions, especially from newer users, about is the software really user-friendly? Is it not user-friendly? What does it look like? Um, on some of the Facebook groups I've been on. So I decided to do a video on what the Glowforge software looks like. A lot of people consider this a plug and play machine, which I would in general agree with. So you might've heard on the advertisements, this will be up and running for you in 30 minutes and you can make your first cut. That is legitimately true. And the other thing that I like that they actually changed recently is there is a lot of design and other things that you can do right here in the software. So we'll go ahead and go into that in a second. Now I will tell you some of these things I designed in Glowforge themselves, some of these I designed in Inkscape, and then some of these I designed in Template for Me, which is another thing. If you are interested in making templates like this one or this one, uh, you can kind of see brief views of them. Uh, the, that is in some of my other videos, so feel free to check that out. So all of these are kind of created in different softwares. So let me just kind of show you what this looks like. So this is app.glowforge.com. And the way that you want to do things is you start with create. Now it leads you to three different buttons. So you can do a blank design, which we'll talk about. You can upload a file and uploading a file would look like something from any of these different things are SVGs that mostly I've created in Inkscape. So Inkscape tutorials are somewhere else. So I can click on any of these types of things and then I can open that and then it will open it up in the Glowforge software as well. So that's one of the first things that you can do. And so this was a nightlight that I made for someone out of acrylic. And so you can see that it places this and I already sized it and all that in Inkscape. And over here, you can e very easily change the settings. So for example, this part, I don't want this cut out. I want this engraved. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to change the material up here. So what I originally used for this nightlight was clear acrylic. So I changed that to clear acrylic. Now this is the proof grade settings. Proof grade material is included with your Glowforge. What that means is it's material that has been screened by Glowforge and it is okay to use in your Glowforge. I will tell you though, that there is tons of material that is completely fine to use in your Glowforge and you shouldn't be scared to go beyond proof grade material. So you don't have to just buy that. Actually, that material is a lot more expensive than a lot of other vendors and suppliers. So, but I do use the proof grade settings a lot. So if I have clear acrylic from some other vendor, but it's still one eighth inch clear acrylic, I'll just use the same setting. So that's really nice that they have all the settings plugged in for you because it makes things so much easier. And then it also gives you very, very straightforward settings for engraving and cutting. So right now we're cutting this part of the clear acrylic and we are cutting this part of the clear acrylic. But what's really easy is I don't want happy home cut out. I want it engraved. And so you can see really, really easily here, they have different settings. So I can click engrave and then that automatically changes it to a clear acrylic engrave setting. And it's that easy. And then you would literally hit go. You can see that my Glowforge is actually currently going right now on a different project, but you would hit ready right here and then it would start to go and you press the magic button and it goes. So that's one of the amazing things. You can also go here and hit score. Score, as you can see, does not fill in everything. It's not the same thing as cut. A uh, score actually just creates these lines on the piece. So it usually goes really, really quickly. It will not cut through, but it'll create lines. So one of the things that I do with scoring is I actually create puzzles where people can color in their own pictures, which I think is pretty cool. Um, but you can also hit ignore. So let's say I wanted this base, but I did not want the happy home anymore. I just wanted to do the base for something else. Then you could hit the ignore button and you would just cut out right around this. But the awesome thing is you don't have to go with all of these proof grade settings. If these don't match your project, 
you can put your own settings in. So let's say I go cut and let's say my cut doesn't work with this particular setting. I have all of these other things that I've already programmed in. And if you click on manual, you can put in your own settings. Now, when you get started, it might be a little hard. You might have to trial and error some things. So I wouldn't buy expensive things right off the bat. I'd use your cheaper materials to kind of play around with things or do a very, very tiny sample. But you can play around with all of these different settings with cutting and with engraving. So all of these are pretty easy to use. It also gives you control, as you can see, of number of passes. That means the number of times that it will go through your material. So you can do up to three. So you could cut this and cut it again and cut it again, all within one single push of the button. It allows you to change lines per inch. What that means is basically if you have an image, this is how many lines will be in every inch, as it kind of says. You can go up to a lot bigger. Sorry if that's in the way. Um, so you can go up to like 13, 20 or something like that. So really, really detailed. One thing to note is as you go up, it will take you longer. So usually the, the typical is right around 225. Um, most things are totally fine with that. It auto focuses, but you can also change the focus or go out of focus, which some people might want for other reasons. Um, so there's tons of different things that you can control about this. You can also control the different graphics. So a draft graphic versus SD versus HD. So this will be how detailed, how deep, and how quick it will go it will change all of those things. And as you can see, the other thing that's really nice about these is you can program in your own settings. So you only have to program it in once. So there was a setting that I looked up and I tried a few different settings for glass. I found one that worked for me. And so I programmed it in as glass. So if this was glass, I'd press this and that's automatically my glass setting. And I don't have to remember that anymore. That's one of the things I love about the Glowforge super easy to use in that particular way. See, you can see all of these different like slate and things like that. And again, you can always create your own. So let's say I'm just going to do this as my practice. So I'm going to make this, let's say 15 power and 500. Now, one thing to note, slower the speed, the more it will go through the material, the less power the less it will go through the material. So you kind of got to balance it. A lot of people like to actually go to full speed and full power for engraving because it's basically the quickest way to get a decent engrave. So let's say theoretically this was going to be my setting. I would hit this plus button up here, save as, and then you could just label it whatever you wanted to. So I'm just going to put practice as mine, save it. And then if you go back, you see that that is there now amongst all of your other settings. And so if I really wanted the setting, it was really, really easy to do. And so that's one of the other things that I love about the Glowforge. So going forward, though, this software has even more things that we can do on it, which I will put out actually on our next video. So thank you guys for tuning in on this one. Um, this is kind of how you guys uh, get some basic graphics in, explaining a little bit about the settings. Tune into the next video that talks a little bit about all the other Glowforge things that it has to offer in the settings. <laughs> Thanks, guys.